Hey guys, what's up? Gonna restart the Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Let's play, cause I lost my <laughs> lost my uh, pretty, pretty much I lost my other game and uh, I kind of gave up playing that. So might as well start another one. I gotta finish it. And we're gonna go in difficult. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna like breeze through it. Gonna pretty much summarize what happens in the dialogue and uh, maybe we'll. I don't know if you want to watch these cutscenes still, I guess. Actually, no, fuck it. So let's see, chapter one, prologue, mercenaries. Alright, so basically they were training with his dad. Um, gets knocked out, Miss comes, wakes him up, blah blah blah, his dad comes, checks on him, then Boyd's like, I'll help you train. So we go train with Boyd. And we fight. Boosh! Pretty much it's impossible to lose this fight, because you do 9 damage, he does 8, and you kill him in 2 hits, and he kills you in 3. Easy peasy. Such different music when other people attack you. Uh, we have defeated Boyd and got 38 XP. Woohoo! Get fucked. Blah blah talking shit. Good job! Now he says, I wanna face you, Ike! Miss, like, here, use a Vulnary. We teach you how to use items. So you can pretty much just go around and use Evolner. He won't attack you, I don't believe. So it's probably tell you to use it twice, is pretty much what they're getting at. So use it twice. So I kind of don't have a plan for this um, Let's Play. Like, I don't have, like, uh. I don't have a plan. Yeah, like, I don't know what team I'm gonna use, I don't know the strategy for each place. I kinda know the ins and outs. I did, like, do a little warm-up playthrough, so... What do you do? F like, a 7 damage? 6 damage. Oh, you did 6. Okay, so I'll be left with 1 HP. Cool. Right? Yeah. Man, I can't leave 100% to hit on Grail. That's not happen. Basically, you can just attack into him dumbly, and he'll uh, he'll, he'll win. <laughs> Cause you know he doesn't use a Volnary or anything. Got him. Man, is that how powerful Grail is? Okay, I'll try to explain some things as they come up, because, um, yeah, uh, I'll try to explain it as if, like, you're kind of new to the game. Except for the storyline. Well, yeah, I'll kind of skip on that. I'll explain it as they come along. Basically, yay, I, you defeated both of them in training. You're doing pretty good. And Ike's like, yeah, I want to join the mercenaries, because Dad runs a mercenary company, and he was training Ike in swords play. So, as you can tell, Ike's pretty young. Boyd's like, hey man, I'm professional. And then his, his dad, Grail, is just like, hey, I guess, uh, I guess you can get a job. You'll tag along for one of our adventures. Blah, 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 let's go back to camp. Alright, we finished prologue. Look at that, guys. Freaking on a roll. <laughs> Alright. Zoom through that. Chapter 1, the battle begins. Alright, so this is pretty much our home base here. Everyone's just kind of chilling. You can see all of, all of the gang there. 
And this is Titania. This is a uh, commander is like second in command, pretty much. She's pretty high figure of authority here. She's a very nice person. And like, hey, Ike, you're late on the first day of the job. And they're just talking uh, battle commands, something or battle battle plans. They're talking about a uh, group of bandits out there. And Grail's like, you take these guys. I'll take these guys. Show Ike the ropes. And then Ike's like, yeah, my first job. And this is Oscar. He's a perma-slit-eyed, happy-go-lucky fella. He's also the brother of Boyd, the other green-haired axe dude we beat earlier. Boyd's like a very, uh, impulsive, kind of, uh, also pretty much a kid. It's like, yeah, I can do it, I'm Boyd. And they're just talking about how nervous Ike is. I'll give him his advice. And we're like, okay, let's get out of here. Before them. So we have to go clear out a couple of bandits out in the village to the... Over here. Caldea. Thanks, title prompt. Alright, you see those houses there with open doors? That means we can go in them and collect stuff. So we're gonna go do that. Alright, boy's giving us tips. Don't go gung ho. Alright. So, your very first mission here, you start off with Ike, level 2, as you just leveled up. Coming equipped with a shitload of iron swords, because, you know, he can carry all those weapons at the same time. And um, get Boyd, level 2 fighter. Titania, level 1 Paladin, so this is actually a promoted unit. Level 1 promoted unit. So she's like your kind of like your OP character right now. And we have Oscar, level 3 Lance Knight. So everyone's pretty low level. And uh, Titania is like probably the one that would soak up your XP, if anything. So we're going to visit. And pretty much she's like, blah, 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 blah. Take this weapon. Steel Sword. Wow. So cool. So we're going to possibly trade items here. So I'm gonna. So the reason why I'm taking her steel axe is because I want her to unequip a weapon. I don't know if it worked though. I don't know if that's how it works, but I, I would want her to not have a weapon because I don't want her to kill people. The reason I don't want her to kill people, people, her. Because I want XP. Okay, so you can see on the screen here on the left, it kind of gives you like pretty much how the battle's gonna work out. So HP is obviously HP, both units, my unit in blue, their unit in red. MT is pretty much the might. It uh, pretty much says how much damage you're gonna do to the other person if you hit. And hit is just the percentage of hitting the person. So I have a little bit of advantage, I have 100% hit with a steel sword, mind you. Like, not bad. And he missed, so... Bueno, bueno. Okay, so I'm gonna try and take her stuff with Oscar. Yeah, to equip the iron steel axe, okay. So we'll do that. So pretty much the enemy characters can't go through your characters in this game, and they, it kind of works on the grid system, so... Pretty much the way I have it set up there is that uh, they can only attack one at a time. This is the boss, this is Zawada. What's going on out there? Go kill them, laddies! Because <laughs> I guess they're pirates. And this guy's gonna show us pretty much that uh, houses burn down, break down if uh, bandits get to them. So we can't let that happen. This guy's taking on Boyd here. Takes a miss. <laughs> Boyd looks like the exact same thing as that guy, except like recolored. It's kind of funny. But yeah, Boyd gets the first blood. 
This gentleman here attacking Ike gets a hit, but I hit hit back. I guess uh, I'll explain like weapons too. Might be good to explain. Huh. Nice miss, dude. So one thing to be careful here is, um, so the, the, each character has a bunch of stats on them. As you can see on the personal data section here, they have strength, magic, skill, speed, luck, defense, and resistance. Um, so the, the stats I'm going to go over right now is strength and speed. So speed determines basically how fast your unit is, and if it's four speed more than the opposing unit when you enter battle, you actually attack twice. Now the interesting thing is weapons. So weapons also have something called a weight associated with them, so you see my steel sword is weight 12. Now how do you mitigate this weight? What determines if you can wield it or not based on the weight? It's based on your strength. So right now strength, uh, Ike's strength is 5, and the steel sword has a weight of 12. So there's kind of a discrepancy of 7. So where does the 7 go? It's like, I can still wield it. Where does the 7 go? It's subtracted from my speed. So right now, Ike te technically has 1 speed when attacking people. And uh, even the Iron Sword has a uh, weight of 7, so when he attacks, he actually uh, when he attacks units with an Iron Sword, he has an actual speed of 6. Now this is not too much of an issue, because the bandits have a speed of 3. But say someone with this, like, this Myrm Myrmidon here that has a speed of 6, if you were to attack Ike, he would be able to attack twice, which is kind of... I don't want that to happen, so... I might switch to an Iron Sword here, and then heal up. Because I want Ike to get as much... as much XP as possible. So I'm gonna move Titania towards the... the little shack here. And I'm gonna get Boyd here to... let's see what the stats are. So he'll do 8 damage to Boyd, Boyd will do 13 to him. Okay, I can deal with that. And then uh, I'll end there. So pretty much, Titania is pretty much unkillable. Like, it's not impossible for her to die. No matter how much in harm's way you throw her, she won't die. God, I hope they don't surround me, that would suck. That I can't get to the freaking place I want to go to. Alright, he's attacking Ike. Hits him. Smack him. Dead. So technically if Ike gets a level up here, he might be able to start double attacking people. Oh, and I should probably explain how leveling up works. Oh, he actually got speed too. Nice. Uh oh. Ooh, missed. Oh, he double attacked. Nice. Okay, so... That's an example of double tank. <laughs> also, basically, when a character levels up, uh, when a character levels up, he has a chance to um, all the stats have a chance to level up, and the chance to level up is pretty pretty much predetermined by the the creators of the game. So, in other words, there's a possibility that you can level up all the stats, there's a possibility that you can level up none of the stats. It's 100% random. So something to be careful of. How much damage? Would he have killed me? No, he wouldn't. Have. Okay. Alright, so I want to get here. I want this because I bet it's going to destroy the house. Ooh, Oscar, wow. Not bad. Alright, visit. Something, something. Help our village. Take this seraph robe. And I say, okay. Sure. So 
So let's see. I'm assuming I'm assuming Ike's gonna be okay if I kill this guy. Kill him, Ike. Watch out. Also, the reason why I unequip it to Tanya is that most people are, will, all the enemies will actually be kind of drawn to attack her because she has no way to attack back. So, like, hey, that's a free hit. That's a free chance of the hit. Let's go. So, that kind of thing. But this guy actually goes for Ike. So, he did thick damage there. But I hit him back. So, we're all square. I guess they realize attacking Tanya is pretty much useless. Hmm. Not bad, Boyd. Not bad. Oh no, Oscar. So I guess next I'll discuss. Uh, Weapon triangles. So basically, weapon triangles is like different. There's like basically several types of weapons. I'm gonna basically go over melee weapons here. So there's basically the sword, a lance, which is what Oscar has, and an axe. So basically, there's like a triangle kind of system. So basically, sword beats axe, axe beats lance, lance beats sword. By beating it, I just mean like there's kind of a hit percentage difference with it. I don't have a Volnary. I'll probably take it from Boyd and use it. Take that! And you're down. So I'm definitely gonna level up Ike. It's kind of no, no, you have kind of don't have a choice. He's in like every single mission, so you kind of have to use him. And I'll probably end up using Oscar and Boyd quite frequently, since uh, they're pretty pretty good units as well. Basically, the quality of the units based on its like um, stat growth percentages and how often you have them throughout the game. And Oscar, Boyd, and I are pretty much gonna they're gonna be with you all the time. It's a little bit of a little bit of metagaming there. Okay, we'll just kinda group them together. So I should be able to kill this swordman swordsman here. Like take that. I'm like, ow. Oh no, I didn't kill the swordsman. Awkward. <laughs> Might speed it up by taking out these animations here just to save time. These animations are kind of like the staple of Fire Emblem games. But you can also take it out if you want things to move faster. So I'm going to start moving up a bit. I'm kind of scared. I can only has 8 HP. I mean 10 HP. There's tax 14. Okay, so that guy's down. So I'm going to leave one possible area to attack Ike, because so, I think I can take one hit. So now the only way this can kind of go really bad is if Ike crits and actually kills the guy straight up. Because then that leaves room for another guy to attack. Because this guy should only be able to do 8 damage to Ike, so Ike should be able to survive. Or he can just dodge it too. That works. You know, that works too. Good job, man. Swing and a miss. 
Yeah, let's see that guy. I guess that guy will move of his own accord later on. Let's get some XP for Boyd here. For Boyd. Get him, Tiger. Bam. Oof. Ouch. So I guess Oscar starts off pretty decently fast. Can double attack people. Not too shabby. So I should be able to take this guy out. And he's down. So I got HP, speed, and defense. Not bad. Anytime with like three stats at least go up, that's considered like a pretty average level up. Just the worst you don't want to see is when it goes down to zero. Getting zero stats on a run is pretty demoralizing. Like I only did one damage to Oscar. Jeez. Alright. Just feeding Ike the kills. Oh, I got an iron sword out of that. Cool. So we're gonna move him towards the boss. The boss actually doesn't move from his little sp space there. So it's interesting to note that. Okay, so it's probably gonna hit Oscar here. Oscar will have pretty low HP. Good to note that Titania will probably like wreck this guy. So I could actually do 14 damage, that's actually quite a lot of damage. So let's see, this guy will do 9 damage, so maybe... Do you have a full Mary still? Okay. Wait, let's see if he has any other items in Iron Axe now, okay. So that's good, so I can put him here. Trade with Ike, take a Balneri, eat it. And call it a day, I guess. Let's see. Let's get our stuff back from Oscar. That guy has some sloppy, sloppy form. Alright, so, oh, I got that XP. And I can go in and attack. Do I get double attack with that? No. Okay. Let's go. I should get the boss XP kill here, which is pretty much a lot. Which is pretty bonus XP. And he crits him. Okay. Alright. I didn't even see what the crit percentage was, but it probably was not a lot, like, single digits. It's like an item to discard, and just been paying more attention. Oh well. That's everyone cleared, so... Oh, only I can seize Fox. Alright, seized! We did it! Hmm. So basically, uh, they were like, hey, wow, Ike, you got so much better. And then Ike's like, well, look at my dad, though. He's so good. I can't, I can't compare to my dad. And they're like, yeah, but your dad's, your dad's like pretty legendary, dude.
And they're all like pretty much happy that he completed his first mission without any hitches. And they're like, yay, we did it. And life goes on. All right, so we're gonna start off chapter two here. Rescue. So here comes a little cool guy with a stick. His name is, I wanna say Rise. At the same time I wanna say Riss. I don't know how you pronounce it really. I'm gonna go with Rise. Shout out to Lull. So he's pretty much our uh, priest. AKA our healer, our heal bitch. He's been a little sick, he's just kinda of getting up, getting his strength around, but he kind of he's not really suited for combat quite yet. And uh, Rise brings a letter to Titania. My man get man came over and gave it to him. Uh oh, Tanny is upset. Tanny is leaving to go do something. What did the letter say? What did the letter say? He runs in. Everyone, come quickly! Hey, what's up? How you doing? What's going on? And it's Mist and Rolf. They've been taken! So Rolf is basically Oscar and Boyd's younger brother, and who is basically not really capable of fighting yet. And Mist is Ike's younger sister, who's also not capable of fighting. They're pretty much young children. They were out to gather flowers, and the bandits came and took them. She. So basically, Titania's orders were to get Oscar to form up the crew. 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 I don't know what else. I was, was going to say troop and crew at the same time, and they said crew. But, uh, of course, disobeying orders, Ike is going off on his own to go face them head on. Then Boyd's like, hey, if you're going, I'm going too. And then Ryan's like, if you're going, then I'm going too. And Oscar's like, oh, God, we're going to get in trouble for this. And he hit a fork in the road, and we don't know which way to go. Boyd's like, you idiot. And then I was like, stop fighting. And um, pretty much like, well, how do we do? But it's like Oscar knows the way, so he's like, let's go this way, to the bandit stronghold. So, and they all go over that way. To the bandit hold! Ikano. So you came, did you boys? You came alone? You're nothing without that redhead, girl. And they're locked up in the shack. So they're like, you know what? We'll kill you guys before the strong red-headed one comes by. And then, surprise! It's a tarp! <laughs> What'd you say, you dirtbag? Okay, so that's pretty much going to be uh, this episode here. I'll probably do one level per episode. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Later!